Wonderful, keep up the great work. All right, so now what we want to have a look is we want to have a look at answering the massive, crucial question, how will your solution help? So remember, your customers are not buying the features of your product. The customers, your customers are not buying the gearbox. They're buying the fact that the gearbox, if it doesn't work, their entire plant is down and they will lose huge revenue. So think, or should I rather say, stop thinking in terms of features and start learning to have those powerful business, those financial conversations. Because we can no longer just be talking about the concrete costs. We've got to be talking about opportunity costs. We've got to be talking about all the different possible cost savings that using our product or our service or choosing our organization to form a long-term mutually beneficial supply agreement, how will that save the organization money? So when we're talking, remember this is the middle tier deck, this is the brass text sales deck, this is the deck that's talking to the person who holds the budget. So you want to obviously be talking about return on investment. So in the case of my sales training, there's a real cost. So there's a cost involved in the training, but if there's not going to be an increase in sales, well, there's no point in doing it. So if you're going to spend a thousand rand on sales training or a thousand rand on a product or a service, you have to, as an organization, realize a return. So you need to think around a return on investment. You see, your return on investment is not the cost of the product. It's not just the physical cost of the product, but it's rather the fact that you don't need to repair it as often, the fact that it lasts longer, the fact that it performs better, it uses less energy. So think around those terms. Think about those financial conversations because that is what your customers want. If you want to stop having customers constantly complain about price, you need to think around value. And value is how can we save you costs not on the price of the product, but on the performance of the product. And when we can have those kind of powerful return on investment conversations, it becomes so, so easy to close sales. Next. You want to understand the challenges, right? And how do we understand challenges? You, you're not going to like the sound of this, guys, but it takes a little bit of additional work. The challenges, in the past, you could have probably got away. You could have got away with in the past just pitching up and probably being a great talker, knowing a little bit about your product. But today, customers are way more informed. Customers have very different expectations. Customers expect you to arrive at a meeting not asking, so what is the challenge, but rather coming prepared, understanding the challenge, already have researched, already have some rudimentary understanding. Of course, there are some things you're going to ask, but they've got to be educated questions. They've got to be questions based on sound research. So you've got to do, or so rather say, approaching sales like you did in the past, where you thought you could just wing it, where you thought you could just arrive at meetings and shoot the breeze, those days are over. And in fact, they were over before the lockdown and before uh, the pandemic. But because of the pandemic, it's just accelerated things. Things have just accelerated so much faster. Next, you want to speak to the right person, obviously. It's no good going into an organization, identifying the challenge, finding the perfect solution, and then you talk to the person who doesn't have the budget, or you talk to the person who isn't the decision maker. Of course, you need to talk to influencers, you need to talk to users, possibly to engineers, to technical people, but at the end of the day, until you speak to the person who holds the checkbook, until you speak to the person who makes the final buying decision, all of your efforts are going to come to naught. And remember how our approach is, we have a CEO or C-suite sales deck. So we influence from the, from the top down from a macro perspective, the big change. Then this deck we're talking about is the brass tacks middle second tier deck where we're talking to buyers, where we're talking about return on investment. And then we have the user deck, and that's where we get users to put pressure from the bottom, saying this product is amazing. We get 
C-suite to put pressure from the top saying, guys, this will help our business. And then you have the middle deck, which is the one we're talking about now, where we're talking about showing. We're talking about return on investment. We're talking about understanding their challenges. We're talking about making sure when we've done all this work that we do indeed connect and engage with the right person. Next, you want to create meaningful numbers. You see, numbers speak volumes. If you go in and you just, the only number you've got in your proposal is your concrete cost, well then guess what your buyer's going to do? They're going to compare your concrete cost price to the concrete cost of your competitor's product because they've got nothing else to compare it to. But when you start bringing in other things, other cost savings, energy savings, um, reduced downtime savings and you can start having those kind of amazing conversations around other cost savings. Now it's no longer price comparison but it's a value comparison. Excellent, right? Next thing, you want to understand what's missing from this current solution because what's missing is your unique differential advantage of you, your organization, your product and your service and you, because you have this differential advantage, can offer optimized, or should I rather say, you can help with what's missing from their current solution. You want to keep aware, like I said, doing that monthly SWOT analysis is critical. Why? Because it keeps you aware of what's changed internally, externally, and you can constantly use those creative, innovative juices to connect what's changed to your organization's, your product and your services, unique differential advantage. You want to prove your solution works. In other words, recorded testimonials, run trials, um, case studies. You've got to be able to prove it. You can't make unfounded claims unless you can prove that your product actually works. And the important thing to keep in mind here you've always got to be able to quantify. So, yes, you have a differential advantage, but what is that differential advantage? In other words, what does it mean in terms of money? So, I've got this challenge. I'm in this undesirable state. Your product is going to offer me optimized transformation. I'm going to be in a more optimized state. So what? When you can quantify that and you can create numbers and you can show them this is where you're at and you'll be in a much more favorable money position. You will save money, reduce costs, have lower electricity, lower energy costs. Now your customer's going to go, this is a no-brainer. Selling becomes simple.